Hey everybody! I haven't been on in a while. I think I say that when I start almost every single video. <laughs> but I am just recovering from COVID. I had it for a couple of weeks and I'm just starting to get my energy back a little bit. Actually, a lot of it. I, it was kind of slow. Two and a half weeks of um, really dragging. It was hard to get through it, but um, we finally did. And I'm feeling much better, so I thought I would come on here, say hi, make a video. And I'm in my new office. Got my new office all done in the basement. It's going to work out awesome for my coaching, my life coaching. It's got its own entrance, entrance way, entryway, entrance way, um, down here in the basement. And so I can have clients come in here. And, and also I do every, a lot I do online. So that has all come together. Pretty excited about that. And so I, um, what I wanted to talk about today was something that came up about my family feeling sad about me because they feel like I've changed and I think the change that they might be seeing because they always knew that I was a pretty bold person I was always way more outspoken I'm more like my dad that's my dad behind me actually right there I have his picture up I was a lot like him when he was here, very outspoken, and um, so I don't think that's a problem. I don't think that's changed. It's just really helped me to, I guess, come out more on YouTube, but I've not changed in the sense that it's negative. Um, I, 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 I do want to say that I feel like because my family's sad, if you're watching, and maybe you are, I don't want you to be sad. I don't want you to be hurting. I don't really think that you've given me that kind of consideration like I've given you because I don't know that you care that I'm hurting because you ignore me and you don't reply to my texts or my phone calls or I haven't called in a while but my texts my emails I don't feel any negative feelings against any of my family even though they've completely shut me out they decided to block me on Facebook. I just recently got blocked by somebody who was pretty interesting. Um, I'm not going to mention names and I'm not going to mention who, how this person is related to me. But he's, a, he's an active elder. And he, at one time, was found guilty of bestiality. Now, I don't have any proof that he actually went through with his desires because and that's disgusting to even say out loud on a video but I did have proof with my late husband and I both we were part of proving on his computer to the elders that he was guilty of looking at bestiality sites websites and they removed him for a little while. And then he got his privileges back again. So here, here's a man. And I'm sorry, but, you know, adultery and immorality, yeah, that's, adultery's bad. Okay, I don't, I mean, you know, cheating on your mate, you know, that's, I, I can't, um, you know, I can't stress how, 
how I feel about being faithful because I, I, I totally disagree with, with hurting your mate. I know there's circumstances and I'm not here to judge anybody, but when you are guilty of looking at websites that are disgusting to the average man, okay, we're not talking porno here, we're talking, like I said, I can't, I don't even want to say it out loud, I just don't, so this man is an active elder again, he's in my family, and he blocked me on Facebook, wow, really, because I called him out, he has a disfellowship daughter who he talks to on a regular basis and I was in a conversation with him and when I called him out on it, which I told him, you should talk to your daughter. She's your daughter. I don't care if she's disfellowshipped or not. I I think you should talk to her. He lied. Oh, I've, I, I've only visited her once. What's interesting is he seems to forget that he's married to another family member. Again, I don't even want to bring up who it is. Who talks to me, or did, before, about everything he does. So I already knew that he'd visited his daughter on a regular basis. But he lies to the elder body so that he can still be an elder. Because he can't go visit a disfellowship daughter if he's an elder. So he lies about it. I don't care. But the point is... That's hypocrisy right there, at its finest. That's hypocrisy. So, my family says I've changed. And have I changed? Yeah, I have changed. But how I've changed is, I've become less anxious. I've become less fearful. Oh my goodness, I don't know how many of you watching stayed in the fear while you were in the organization that I did. I was taught since I was born to fear demons. It was it was a, a constant thing that came from my mom. I mean, it was just, it was awful. I was afraid of every sound, of every, everything. I mean, it, it, it was just not normal to feel that much fear and anxiety. I don't have that anymore. I don't believe in any of that anymore. Um, quite frankly, I'm not gonna get into that because I'm not gonna get into religion or spirituality or anything like that on this video, but I don't fear that and I don't worry about that. And it's wonderful, it's liberating. It is so liberating not to worry about demons and, and and things like that. It's just... So yeah, I've changed in that sense. I don't... I don't fear things like that. I'm not anxious. I'm not depressed anymore. I'm not depressed anymore. I started taking antidepressant, anti-anxiety medication a couple of years ago. And I've been weaning off of it for a while now. It's a really slow process, but you have to wean off of it super slow. And... I cut it in half immediately and I was really surprised that because normally when I would go off of it which I've been on and off of it over the years when I would go off of it I would get these weird brain zaps and so I had to cut it down pretty slow and I cut it in half thinking oh boy we'll see what happens and I didn't have anything like that which tells me my serotonin levels are are good so that was the first that I was able to do that, cut it down so drastically, and now I'm going to cut it down again. But, yeah, that's changed. I'm not depressed. I'm not anxious. I stopped drinking. I used to drink all the time to numb myself. I have no desire to drink. I don't, I'm not having a problem with anybody that does, but I just personally did it to self-medicate, and I don't need to anymore. So that's changed a lot. I have more energy because I believe that my frequency level, my energy was just so low, my frequency was so low 
that I was sick all the time, I didn't feel good, I was depressed, I was anxious, I had no energy at all, like literally none. I had no, I just didn't have the desire to do a whole lot. And once I left and I started discovering who I was inside, my energy levels went up tremendously. And I just feel happy to get up every single morning. I get up every morning. And even while I had COVID, even though that did kick my butt a little bit, I'm not going to lie, it did. It messed with my emotions too. It's not a fun virus. But I still was happy when I woke up in the morning. And so yes, that's changed in me. I'm happier. So I, I wanted to go over a scripture. I looked up what the new personality is. Um, you know that if you're, you know, you've been a witness for any amount of time, that when you study and you become a witness, the first thing they tell you is you have to strip off the old personality, put on the new personality. So I know that I've seen some amazing changes in people. When I was in the organization, I did. I, I saw some people that were really a mess. They came in, studied the Bible, and changed. I mean, we all know those stories. Those are good stories. Those are great. And it happens a lot. Now, not just with witnesses. A lot of people study the Bible in prison or whatever, and they change. And that's good. And I think it's wonderful when people make those kind of changes and become good people. If You know, I mean, that's obviously, right? But for some reason, when you change and leave and you become a different person because you're being your authentic, true self, all of a sudden your family says, oh man, you've changed too much. But I just went over the ways that I've changed. I've not really changed in a bad way. If someone thinks I have, I, I really wish that they would tell me instead of not ever calling me or texting me or, you know, they block me on Facebook and whatever. I wish someone would just say, this is how you've changed. Because the only change is going to be you don't follow the governing body. That's my only change. I I don't follow eight men in New York. I don't listen to, I don't hang on to every word they say. Can I get the vaccine? Can I not get the vaccine? Can I have blood? Can I not have blood? Can I celebrate Christmas? Can I celebrate birthdays? Am I not supposed to do any of that? No one should tell you what to do and what not to do. That's something that you as a person, as an individual, should be able to make your own decisions. You're a grown-up. Why would you have to listen to eight men? And if you choose not to listen to them, Right? If you choose to do what you want to do, and it doesn't have to be wrong or bad or immoral, you just live your life, you're a good person, then you get ignored. You, you get treated like you're a criminal. They go to the prisons and they, witnesses, well, they'll go, I don't think they're going now for, from COVID, um, the situation, but they would go to the prisons and witness to these people, pedophiles, rapists, murderers. They'd go out and talk to these people, right? They talk to these people, bring them to the kingdom hall once they got out and they became witnesses. Now, did all of them change? Really? No, obviously pedophile paradise inside the organization. They all talk to their friends. They know. So no, of course not. Did some of them? Sure. Sure they did. But, I mean, I, I guess I just don't understand. You, you, know, you go to the prison and you, and you talk to people that have molested children and raped women and and that's okay 
that's okay to do that. But if you're somebody like me, who simply finds out the truth about the truth, suddenly I'm worse than a murderer or a pedophile. And suddenly you're saying I've changed drastically. But I really haven't, except for the things I just mentioned. But I want to just read just a little bit of Colossians that talks about, like I said, you know, they, they always say to put on the new personality. And where they get it from is Colossians 3. And so verse 5 starts out by saying, Deaden therefore your body members, you know, as respects to sexual immorality, uncleanness, uncontrolled sexual passion, hurtful desire, greediness, which is idolatry. So have I changed in this way? Because we're, we're going through what the new personality is, which is something that I would have had to have to, you know, answer the questions and become baptized. So have I changed in this way? Well, I'm going to tell you how I've changed in this way. It talks about not being sexually immoral, okay, which would include cheating on your mate and, and you know, whatever else. But, um... When you do leave the organization, you you know the stories that go around are, oh my gosh, Satan, Satan Satan's going to get to her. He's he's going to convince her to be, you know, immoral or maybe become a drug addict or whatever. Who knows? You you've heard the stories. I've heard the stories. Something that really kind of floored me when I left, and this might sound really simple to you. But to me, it was really a light bulb kind of went on for me. I said to my husband one day, you know, I always thought that the reason that I was a faithful wife or a good mom or a good friend or anything is because I was a witness. Because that's what's constantly talked about from the platform, right? You know, the talks about, you've, you've heard the different talks about the only reason that, that we're good people is because we're witnesses and we've, you know, we've been taught this, 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 and this. And it, without that, you're nothing. I mean, let's face it, the Watchtower says that. Without, without being in the truth, you're not going to be that kind of person anymore. So I said to my husband, you know, I would never cheat on you. I I have the freedom to do anything I want now. I don't disfellowshipping doesn't scare me anymore. So I'm not being faithful because I'm afraid of being punished. I'm being faithful because I want to be faithful because I want to be a good wife and I love you. And that floored me. That for the first time in my life, I realized that I'm a good person because I'm a good person. Because in my heart, I would never want to hurt anybody. And I never knew that until I left. So this says, you know, not to be um, immoral, which I believe, you know, adultery, obviously, I'm married. So did I change in that way? No, not at all. And I, and, it, and I mean, that's, I only discovered who I really am. Let's just put it that way. I discovered who I really am on my own without religion, without listening to eight men in New York, without worrying that I'm going to be disfellowshipped. And that's the only reason that I'm being a good person. I don't worry about that anymore. I'm, I'm, I do what I do because I want to do it. Not because I'm afraid of the circumstances of not doing it. So that is, I have not changed in that sense. In fact, quite opposite. Um, so verse 8 goes on to talk about putting away all wrath, anger, badness, abusive speech, obscene talk. I'm not a abusive speech or obscene talk person. I never have been really. 
And um, that hasn't changed in me either. I don't walk around using horrible language and... I mean, I have no problem with people that do. I'm not anybody to judge. I've just never been a big swear person. Maybe it's because I was a witness all my life. I don't know. Um, but I... You know, I don't have any problem with anybody regardless. But that hasn't changed in me. Wrath and anger. Has that changed in me? Actually, it has. I am not an angry person anymore. As much as I should be angry about my whole life being spent in a little box like that big I'm not I'm not angry it was a lesson I feel like I learned a lot from it I feel like it helped me go on to be a life coach and help other people it helped me to become involved in CASA which is a court appointed special advocate for children in foster homes so it definitely helped me do that. But I am I'm not angry. I'm not wrathful or I don't I'm not re I don't want revenge or anything like that. So, yeah, I have changed because when I was a witness, I was very angry all the time. I had a fuse about this long. People that know me know that. I did. I couldn't even sit in traffic because I felt like I was just so angry all the time. Like I just, you know, get out of my way. And, and I just had this, this short fuse. And now I don't. I And, I, and I, I don't know what else to contribute it to except because I'm so much more content with my life. I don't seem to spout off like I used to. Now, I will spout off with the truth about things. I will definitely tell my family and whoever else why I left, and I will tell them the honest truth about it. So yeah, I'm going to defend that, but it's not because I'm angry, and it's not because I'm spouting off in a bad way. So I've changed in that way, but not for the bad. It was for the good. I will say, though, that wrath and anger and obscene talk and abusive speech reminds me of a talk that was given by Toni Morris some time ago. I believe it was either a morning worship or a one of the monthly broadcasts. I don't, I don't remember. But you'll, all, you'll probably remember this, and if you didn't watch it, I'm sure you've heard about it, where he talked about Armageddon and seeing dead people. He talked about them being, their bodies being charred and split open like a hot dog on a grill. I remember when I first watched that, I was horrified. It was horrified. I felt sick. And he talked about how people would be numb because of the dead bodies. You're going to be numb. And he, he said something about, you think seeing a deer get hit by a car is, is, makes you numb. Wait till you see all these dead bodies. And if you don't believe me, watch it. It's not hard to find it. I, I think that's wrath, anger obscene talk, and abusive speech. All wrapped into one. I would never, ever wish any kind of death on anyone. I don't want anybody to suffer. I don't want anybody to be sad. I, I wish everybody was as content as I am waking up every morning. I really do. I know that not everybody feels that way about me, but that's how I feel. So, I would never ever talk like that. 
And yet you watch that, and you're okay with that. You're okay with Toni Morris blowing out a match and saying that our lives are going to be like that smoke. <sighs> Gone. Dead. How can you watch that kind of stuff and then say that you're sad for me? I've changed. No, I'll never stoop to that level. I'll never talk about people like that. I don't care who talks against me or who's angry or sad about me. I would never talk about anybody like that. I don't wish that on anybody. Then verse 9 says, do not lie to one another. Wow, that's like, uh, that's a loaded, uh, loaded statement right there. Do not lie to one another. Hmm. Well, I don't even, I can't even go there. I don't want to make that long of a video. The lies that come out of the organization are, um, horrific. Their newest one is, not newest, but what they're really pushing with the pedophile situation is that, well, we don't have any, we don't have Sunday school and we don't have all these things where we leave our children alone. They know that's not true. They know that's not true. I was involved in a pedophile case and it was because they went to a gathering. This pedophile was, was accosting boys at gatherings. It's happened in Kingdom Halls. It's happened in cars out in service. It's happened at book studies when they used to have them. Do not lie to one another. Do I lie? No. I don't. So I've not changed in that sense either. I don't lie. I didn't lie then, I don't lie now. Actually, <laughs> I told little white lies when I was a witness to cover up things that bothered me. I was not completely truthful when I was a witness because we were told not to be. We were told to be quiet about certain things and they kind of taught you how to twist things a little bit. I mean, you, I, I, Drop in the comments below what you guys have gone through with that. But if you remember being told kind of how to twist things a little bit. It was called theocratic warfare. We're in a theocratic warfare. So we kind of have to keep things, you know. I don't do that now. I tell the truth. And that's what's gotten me in trouble. Is being very honest with people about what I learned. And. And why my conscience bothered me so bad that I left after what I learned. So, I'm not a liar. And, you know, I, that hasn't changed for me. Now, verse 12 says, To clothe yourselves with tender affections of compassion, kindness, humility, mildness, and patience. Conti continue putting up with one another and forgiving one another freely if even if anyone has a cause for complaint against another, just as Jehovah freely forgave you, you must also do the same. So, clothe yourselves with tender affections of compassion, kindness, humility, mildness, and patience. Has that changed in me? Yeah, it has. Yeah, it has. I'm more compassionate now. I am. I'm a lot more compassionate. I don't judge people. I used to. When I was a witness, I did. I, I judged. And I feel bad for that now. But I, I'm very much more compassionate. I'm kinder. Kindness. I'm, I'm a lot kinder to people. My husband says he's seen huge changes in me since I left. He said it's really amazing how much I've changed. And that's one of the ways. Humility. Mildness. And patience. I am a lot milder than I used to be. I used to have, you know, a short fuse. So, I am a lot more mild. And I'm a lot more patient. I am a lot more patient. 
I used to not be able to have patience for a whole lot and things just don't bother me like they used to and it's because I don't have some, you know, I don't have the anxiety and the fear and, and the depression anymore. Um, I'm, I've gotten rid of all that. Not saying that I don't have some, everybody gets anxious about something. But as a general rule, I, I do not. I do not get anxious. I don't have panic attacks anymore. I used to have them constantly and I don't have them anymore. So, yeah, I am a lot milder, a lot more patient. Uh, the word humility comes up. I don't think higher of myself than I used to. So, I, you know, that's not changed. I don't walk around thinking I'm anything more than I was before. I'm just happy with myself. And I'm not held down to, excuse me, I'm not held down to you know, being pushed into the ground anymore. I'm not going to let anybody do that to me. Nobody should. And I also, I'm not allowing anybody to take my authenticity away from me. And nobody should, you shouldn't have to do that either. So, I've not changed in that way. This um, verse in 14 is pretty important. It says, but besides all these things, clothe yourselves with love. For it is a perfect bond of union. If you clothe yourself with love. Think about this. Okay. If my family's watching right now. Do I love you conditionally? I have not treated you bad. I've not condemned you for what you do. I honestly don't have anything against witnesses or what you do. What I don't like is the lies in the organization that the governing body is doing and, and putting in the publications and what they're trying to cover up. No, I don't believe you have the truth. I don't believe anybody has the truth. I believe that everything is up to us as people and it's in our hearts it's not up to somebody else to tell us what the truth is it's up to us to find out for ourselves but I'm not bitter or angry or vengeful I don't ignore you I love you unconditionally do you love me unconditionally? You don't. Any family member who ignores any of us and treats us as if we're dead and considers us as being charred hot dogs on a grill splitting open, like Toni Morris said, is going to happen to us. That's not clothing yourself with love. Because clothing yourself with love would never allow you to think of that kind of warped ideas. It's just not, that's not normal. It's not normal. We know, and, and the Bible says God is love. Is love. If that is the case, then there is no, there, I mean, there's no cause for anybody to deny a, a relationship with anyone else or block them and delete them on a social media page or any of that. I mean, there's... If you love somebody, if you're clothing yourself with love, then no matter what, that means unconditionally. That means just because I decided that I don't want to follow an organization that lies, that you should ignore me. I don't, I don't understand that. It doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me that you go to the prisons and preach to people in prison and that an organization would take back a, a man to be an elder again who, who's guilty of bestiality porn. That doesn't make sense to me. But you know what? 
I'm not, I'm not even a judge on that. And what, what my family member said was, you can't judge him. Only Jehovah can judge him. You're right. You're right. I can't judge him. You are right. So why are you judging me then? Why are you judging me? My questions were, show me in the Bible where it says that the faithful and discreet slave is the governing body. Show me. Nobody can. Show me in the Bible where it says there's one true religion. Nobody can. Jesus said, follow me. That's what the Bible says. Follow me. Me. Not Catholics, not Protestants, not Lutherans, not Methodists, not Jehovah's Witnesses, not Mormons, not Scientologists. Me. So, I follow those principles. I am a good person because I want to be. Not because I'm afraid of being punished. And not even because I'm afraid of losing anybody. Because if I'm, if I, I've already lost. I'm a good person and I've not done anything wrong except for decide I won't follow the governing body anymore. And that's really what it boils down to. It boils down to not following eight men who followed other men who started this religion 130 years ago and the man who started it was a crackpot who brought his beliefs over from the Adventists, Charles Russell did, and then it went to Rutherford. And if you just do a little research in history, you'll you'll find out these guys were a little little wacko. Rutherford um, built that Beth Sarim so that people could the the prophets of old could come back and have a place to live and you know every year it's been ever changing Armageddon was coming in 1914 and then on and on it went and you know I just simply found out that none of that was true and if you believe it is that's okay I'm okay with that I don't even care if you believe that any of that's true that's fine you can believe what you want to believe there's no proof either way, right? There's no proof that you have the truth. There's no proof that you don't have the truth. There's no proof either way. So what I do should not be so condemned when I'm not doing anything different than what this says. When you change your personality Put on the new personality. Strip off the old. I have not changed. Except for the better. So I... I'm sorry, but I disagree. Well, I'm not sorry. But I do disagree that I've changed my personality to the point where I'm a different person. I'm not. I'm the same Lori. I'm the same me. I just have become less anxious, less depressed, less judgmental, a lot less judgmental. And I really enjoy that about myself. I really enjoy who I've become. And I think that's really important is who you become should be something that makes you feel good every day. When you get up in the morning and you say, it's going to be a really good day. That's what I do. I'm always positive thinking about it. Whereas before, I was pretty negative in my life. When I was a witness, I was. I was really negative. A lot more negative. I, I wasn't really a negative person to begin with. But I was more negative, I should say, than, than I am now. I've been very positive every morning when I get up. If you get up every single morning and you say to yourself, this is going to be a good day. I'm a good person. Here's what I'm going to do today. And you go through the day and you're just happy to be, which I am. That's okay. That's how you should be. But no one has the right to condemn 
anybody for that. Like I said, there's nowhere it is written that you have to follow eight men in New York. I think there's eight of them. Maybe there's nine. I don't know. But nowhere does it say that. And so I haven't done anything evil. I discovered that I'm a good person just because. Because I want to be. And maybe some people just need that structure or the organization to maybe every day just kind of get through the day because they like that that schedule, that regimented schedule, and that's okay. I have no problem with that. I truly don't. If you need that, then you do. And you should be allowed to do that. You should be allowed to, you know, worship or, or do the things you want to do. But when it gets to a point where you're starting to wonder, well, you know, I'm a little leery about this or that. You know, let's, let's say the vaccine, for instance. And the governing body's coming out saying, well, if you don't take the vaccination, though, you know, you can't be a pioneer and you can't travel and you can't do this. And they're kind of making it, you know, they're being pushy with it. They are. And I know that bothers some people that are in still because they've told me. So, you know, unless it gets to that point where it becomes something that goes against your inner belief system then maybe you do need that. And I'm okay with it. And I'm glad. If you are happy in it, I'm happy. I truly am happy. I want people to be happy. I don't want them to be sad for me. There's no reason to be sad for me. But I also want you guys to be happy. Everybody. So I know this video was kind of to my family, if, they wa if they're watching. But... I'm hoping that some of you might be able to relate to it a little bit and maybe it would be, maybe it will be helpful if you're going through the same thing that I'm going through. Because I know that, that a lot of times that's what happens. You leave and you know why you left. We know why we left. We do. We know it's not because we wanted to become some kind of immoral person and do ridiculous crazy things that's not what we're trying to do i'm not i i don't do anything different than i used to do i really don't my life is kind of boring really if you <laughs> if you really want to talk about it i mean I, my husband and i were we watch a movie every night and the news and you know we're kind of regimented in our life and you know on the weekends we sometimes go to the mountains and walk this last weekend, we painted my office. I mean, we're not out there doing anything crazy. We don't even drink. Like I said, we don't. We're not partiers. So I've not changed. I've just become more, well, happier. I've, I've become happier, more content, less anxious, less fearful less depressed. I, I see my potential now and I'm so happy with that. So anyway, this video is long enough, but I did want to get one up and I am going to be working on some more interviews, hoping to get an interview up with a, um, a guy, super nice guy, friend of mine that was a an elder. Hoping to get that up soon. The reasons why he left. I had some interviews lined up and then I got COVID and I haven't done anything. So I'm even back in school for coaching trying to get my master cert certification and I haven't even been able to do that because I was sick. So I'm finally getting back into that again. 
and so I'll be busy doing that too. So anyway, I enjoy your emails. Thank you everybody that's reached out and said, hey, where are you? We miss you. What's going on? I really appreciate that. I actually did have an email that I was going to make a video on, an, an anonymous email, and I was going to work on that too. So I'm going to try to get some more videos up. But thank you for checking on me. Some of you knew I had COVID because I wrote back to you. And if you want to send me an email, email address is below. I'd love to hear from you. And tell me if you want me to cover something in my videos. I, I, I'd love to if I, if I can. And if you like my video, please hit the like button and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.